What it is, y'all, it is your old boy Pilk, and I'm coming back at you today with more Damachi, and today we're going to be talking about Heroic Trial. Now, the current Heroic Trial, this one for Otaro and Ryu, actually goes away uh, in a couple of days. I realized on stream last night that we hadn't done this yet, so let's talk about this event and go ahead and do a quick run through this, and we'll talk about the kinds of things that you can do to be very successful at this if you haven't done it yet. The reason you want to do it if you don't already know is there is a free bond for three of your units in here. For you gets a free bond, Otaro gets a free bond, and Alan gets a free bond. Now your first question is, which bond is better to get? My answer is always going to be Alan. Alan is the best bond to get here because any time you're looking at a uh, an assist versus a uh, an adventure unit, adventure units are fairly inexpensive to come by in comparison. So if it's a time-limited assist like uh, Alan here, that would cost you 1,500 gnome tickets to acquire the star bond for. Versus, let's say Otaro or Ryu would be 1,000. So if you really want to math that out, you're talking about you can get, you know, for 3,000 gnome tickets, you can get three star bonds or you can get two. So... This is a little bit better value. Now, the exception to this could be, and I emphasize could be, uh, notice I bought Alan too, could be simply the fact that uh, these, if you already have Alan maxed out, or you didn't pull enough bonds in to max them out, and maybe one of these two units you could really use the bond of, then I think it's a pretty fair value. But nonetheless, I always say the assist is the better value. The only exception, like I said, is if you can maximum break one and you're going to use that unit on the regular. I would say Otaro's not that unit, but I digress. Otaro, you're not going to use terribly often. I'm going to be real. So let's go ahead and talk about this. We've got Otaro and we've got Ryu, and you're going to fight, be fighting the two of them. You generally don't fight the assist. You only fight the adventurer for obvious reasons. So let's compare the two of them. I'm going to go ahead and do a filter here for Ryu and for Otaro, wherever he is at. I think I passed him already. There he is. Okay. So the new Otaro, and you can always just come in here and check what they do to decide how you want to approach this. So the new Otaro does uh, extra damage. He does uh, three extra actions, or well, one extra action for three turns after he attacks. So you need to be prepared for a lot of extra attacks. Basically, it's like you're fighting four people rather than two. That said, we'll talk about why that's a weird situation here in a moment. Strength and Earth attack damage 75%, so you really want to debuff and take the wind out of their sails. Because if you can remove that strength buff, you'll be in good shape. If you can remove the Earth buff, even better, but removing the strength buff would be a good tactic. Also here, he does physical uh, attack and physical resist and Earth resist. Minus 35%, so your physical resistance is going to go down. Also reduces your guard rate 50%, so if he gets off that debuff, you're not going to be feeling good, okay? Uh, finally is a super class, Earth Physical Attack with Temporary Strength Boost. Critical rate, Strength and Magic, minus 45%. So he can debuff the hell out of you. You really can. Quick, fast, and in a hurry if you're really not paying attention. Then we've got Ryu. Now, Ryu does a slow magic attack with dex plus 30%, so she's going to increase her, her dex pretty well. Wind attack damage 70% for three turns, and she also does three actions. So once again, like I said, you're getting attacked four times a turn. It's really like you're getting attacked by four people. It, it can wear you down if you're not careful. Okay? Fast. Wind magic attack with high penetration rate. Counter rate and guard rate minus 30%. So it's going to take your counter rate down. It's going to take your guard rate down. Though, to be fair, Otaro does decrease guard rate a lot more. She's an AoE where Otaro is single target. These units, generally speaking, are confined to what the units do in the game. They don't really generally do anything extra. So you can use this as a general rule. Okay. High wind magic attack with temporary magic boost and ultra critical rate. So... The way I approached this, I'll go ahead and show you the team that I built. The way I approached this, Otaro is a better hitter, but because he's single target, 
he's a little bit less of a threat. So what I did is I actually went in here with my single target units because my single target units are going to be way better for this fight. By an insane margin, way better for this fight. Alright? So this is the team I'm using. Now, this is the Elise from the... Uh, uh, from the current events. Um, like I said, I'm focusing on single target, so I am using the single target bell. Uh, I believe this unit is actually free to play, if I recollect. I think he's the free to play one. I could be wrong on that. Uh, his stats look pretty free to play. Uh, and he is a magic unit. Let's see, hero ascension. Yeah, it's two. So this dude actually was completely free to play, which is why I threw him on here. Completely forgot about that factoid. Now, uh, I am also using the new Riveria that we got for uh, part two, I believe, of the anniversary event. I have her maximum broken. She's going to be a vital resource of damage on this because all these units are actually weak to water types. So you really, if you have this Riv, Riv takes these units apart at the seams. And I'm using the Fire Riv that we got not terribly long ago and we got all the units for Record Buster. Now these units are max limit broken, but I'm going to be honest, you don't necessarily need the max limit broken. All I'm doing is just trying to like hammer down on this as quickly as possible. And this isn't even the only team you can use. I'm just basically going to show you the reason I went with single target first and foremost. Now, like I said, we got to be careful because they're going to buff. They're going to hit hard. So OG Harahime is going to be really, really, really stressed as long as Ryu's alive to basically be um, be doing your counter heals. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to target Ryu first of all, and I'm basically just going to do a buff rotation and debuff rotation because that's going to help take a little bit of that damage away. And we're just literally going to be basically focusing on Ryu. Our Ryu is our biggest threat because Ryu is AoE. Now, Otaro could hit hard. He could take the wind out of our sails a little bit, but worst case scenario, he's going to you know wipe one unit out a turn. That gives us a few more units that we can just keep throwing at this event. So, on this turn, I'm going to go ahead and go back to doing Yosuga. Pretty obvious, pretty straightforward. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do Shika because I think we can really use the extra counter rate. The, and I'm not too worried about the new bell coming in because these units are max limit broken but bell will help so on this turn we're going to go ahead and do our just basic our basic buff stack that we would normally do with these units that's it it's really and and you'll see it really isn't much of a threat you know what i realized i'm going to go back out here because i don't have any equipment on these units i was running running another event and i forgot to equip my units now, the nice part is, yeah, it's fine, whatever. My mistake. The nice part is you don't have to worry too much about what you're equipping on them. They don't do stuns or anything too crazy, so you can literally just kind of give them basic stuff. I'm going to go ahead and give Lene the uh, swap amulet. That is going to let her basically leave turn one, bring Elise in. Uh, Elise already has it, so there we go. Wait, she doesn't. That was the other one. That was the Magic Elise. All right. So I'm going to come down here one more time. I'm going to grab that one. Boom. Now, so both Lena and Elise, we're going to try this again. Both Lena and Elise now have that equipment. I completely forgot to equip my units. Uh, rookie mistake, but it is what it is. So let's try this again. Debuff. Buff. Buff. 33% SA gauge buff. Now, SA is going to be really important. The faster you can build your SA, the better. Uh, and you will notice that Ryu is hitting hard. It is not fun sitting here and dealing with the damage that Ryu is producing. Uh, for that reason, I am going to do Yosuga on turn 2 because we took some heavy hits turn 1. But we also got some good debuffs out, so we're going to be good in that factor. Now, I am going to debuff Fire Resistance down 40%. With Elise, you will notice that Otaro and, uh, well, Otaro's, I'm sorry, I said water earlier. Otaro's weak to wind, and we debuffed water. And, uh, Ryu isn't weak to much of anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to debuff fire, so that fire resistance goes down as much as humanly possible. We also did debuff water with a an assist. That's where that 15% comes from. So, 
all things considered, that's pretty much why we're going to be successful at this. That and, like I said, our counter heal strategy with Harahime. Now, it's going to be a minute here because you will notice that I need to use Yosuga a lot for that 30% HP heal. We're going to need that. Well, actually, you know what? Turn 3, I can do an SA. Turn 3, I can do an SA. So I'm going to do a Harahime SA. And the reason I'm going to do Harahime SA right out of the gate is because we just need quick, fast, painful damage to rain down on Ryu. And while everybody does have a decent amount of damage, honestly, honestly, that 100% is just going to take the wind out of her sails so much faster. So let's go. Now, we did do the fire buff with um, the bell when he came in. And basically, it's because he's going to get strength 100% anyway. So, actually, he's magic. I take the back. He's going to magic 100% and then the 40% fire. He's kind of a bonus unit here. He's not going to be a crazy damage producer. The two Riverias are definitely doing their job. Uh, but you will see here in a moment why I say doing the single target is such an insane benefit. Uh, Haru, there you go. Perfect. So, we're going to go back to do Yosuga, and we're basically just going to be doing our damage attacks. Now, with Ryu, I w or the, I'm sorry, Riveria, the uh, water one, I am going to have to rebuff this, only because that gives us the extra turns, and that extra damage is going to make a difference. Uh, that's the uh, low water magic attack every turn. So, you'll notice that Frozen Orb down here says that it's got one turn left. If you've been following along... You know that's the moment you need to de you need to rebuff this. So we're gonna do re we're gonna rebuff that because Harihime doesn't do that. We're gonna go ahead and keep doing our big fire attack with her, and we're gonna go ahead and do physical resist, magic resist, twenty percent with Bell because that's basically gonna make sure we're taking a little bit less damage. Though notice we don't need to worry about that too much. Reuse kind of already done, and that's why I so insisted on doing Harihime so early. Because while Ryu is putting a hurt on us, a definite hurt on us, she's gone now. Turn 5, Ryu is already taken care of. Now, this is part of the reason why I say if your units aren't maximum or broken, you don't need to worry about it. You could probably do an earlier defensive buff rather than debuffing like I did fire on turn 2. You could do, like, another defensive buff, like Bell's defensive buff. There's even be way better defensive buffs in the game. But a defensive buff would help you last a little bit longer. That's another strategy. Though to be fair, at that point you're not you know, killing Ryu on turn 5. You're killing her on like turn 7 or 8. Still well within the bounds of getting an easy win on this. Like this is a really, really, really easy event. But because there's two units and because Otarl is single target, I think it's kind of silly to do AoE here. I really think your best benefit is doing single target, getting rid of Ryu early, and then we can just focus on taking Otarl out. Because once again... Notice, Bell wasn't even fully buffed up. Like, he was still on part two of his buff stack. Now he's going to be actually producing a decent amount of damage. And I say decent. Not great, just decent. So, let's go at it. Otaro is now on the chopping block. Otaro is about to basically fall completely off the map. Once again, though, if your team doesn't have these units back, some are broken, or any units back, some are broken, you're okay. You really want to strategize and think about how you're going to take Ryu out early with single targets. You need single targets. And yes, I am aware. My Katori would be hitting way harder than Riv. I'm aware of that. Uh, Anya would be hitting way harder than Riv. I'm aware of that. There are other options. But I really wanted to focus more on newer units. In the case of Bell, a free-to-play unit that can kind of show you different strategies and how to manipulate this for your liking. But in this case... Otaro is going to be weakest to fire attacks, so I'm actually going to do an SA with the Fire Riv. So we're going to do Yosuga, Piercing Chill, SA with Fire Riv, and once again, Scorch. And this actually won't be the last turn, but it'll be pretty close. I think the next turn, I think turn 7 he'll be done. Go girl! Ooh, not quite a mill. Not quite a mill. That is truly unfortunate. Oh, turn six was the last turn. So there you go. That is how absolutely easy this is. And why I say, if you have a good single target team, 
just go at it. And don't worry about, oh, I need this, that, or the other thing. Even if you have, like, Otaro, the one that you're fighting there, he's a great unit. He definitely would be uh, well worth putting on that team. Uh, the Water Riv that I was using, well worth putting on that team. Uh, even Eyes, the single target Eyes we got, well worth putting on that team. Basically, if you wanted to build a team like I build, instead of using the free-to-play bell, instead of using the fire uh, Reveria, you could literally just go in there and use all the single target units from the anniversary. Just make sure you use the appropriate assists to debuff. So you're good to go there and also make sure that you've got enough health or defensive buffs that you can last 10 rounds. But super easy like it's laughably simple this one so go in there guys get your free bond let me know what you guys thought of the video in the comments section um i i i mean i could go rerun it with the most recent units but i'm gonna be honest i would do ex once and then with this team i can uh auto very hard and laugh and have a good time and sit back with you know a bottle of cognac and a fine cigar and watch my teams just ruin this entire event it's hilarious I, we, I think last night we did i think we got all 600 and something like a half hour of the stream because it was just that simple so easy event guys make sure you go in there with your best single targets take where you out early otara will no longer be a threat and you'll be good to go like comment share i'll catch you guys on the next one